Hi guys, how's it going? Ashling here, back reviewing some more books for you on the Waterstones vlog. Uh, this month I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've got some advanced reading copies of books that are coming out in the next two months that I've been reading ahead of time and want to chat to you guys about. Now, first up, coming out in March, I've got Almost Love by Louise O'Neill and I just want to stress that these covers I'm going to show you here they're not going to be the final covers because these are just advanced copies so the final cover is going to be much more beautiful and same for the other two books that I'm about to show you as well. Now, Almost Love is Louise O'Neill's first adult fiction novel. She's previously written uh, teen fiction. Uh, anyone who's read Asking For It, which was her last book before this, I think is going to be a big fan of this. Uh, but I will stress that this is definitely an adult book. Although a lot of people who read her YA books were definitely adults. So she's kind of got that crossover fan base. Uh, Almost Love follows the story of a young woman called Sarah. And it kind of chronicles her relationship, very fraught relationship with an older man and then how that goes on to affect her life and her relationships in the future and how it kind of overwhelms everything and becomes obsessive. Uh, it's a great read. I think uh, you'd fly through it. It's definitely a great pick if you were going to go on a long plane ride or a train or something. You'd probably finish it in one sitting because you're kind of dying to know what happens. So I really, really liked it and I think it's um, very hard to make a book seem effortless in that way. Like it's very simple but also you're getting those feelings that the protagonist is having of being obsessed and wanting to know about this man and trying to make him love her. So I really do think that's an achievement and that's almost love by Louise O'Neill. So you'll see that everywhere when it comes out. It's gonna be all over the place, especially if you're in Ireland. Uh, next up, I have Census by Jessie Ball. Uh, Jessie Ball was named one of Granta's best young American novelists last year and this is his latest novel. It's gonna come out in April. Uh, there's actually a beautiful note at the start of the novel before you get into the main body of uh, writing. It's a note from the writer and it's uh, basically a dedication to Jessie Ball's brother who died uh, at a very young age and who had Down syndrome. And Jessie then goes on to detail how their relationship was, although it was a very strong and beautiful brotherhood, he always saw it as more of a father and son relationship and that was why he was inspired to write this book. So this book uh, follows the journey of a father and son as they go on and do this mysterious census across this sort of nameless dystopian land. It's very, very beautiful. I was kind of thinking of uh, The Road by Cormac McCarthy as I was going through, but it's definitely a more... Uh, a heartfelt and beautiful, optimistic road uh, journey novel than the road is. Uh, the son, he never really speaks in the body of text, but you get to know about him at, through the father and through their relationship, through what the father is seeing, what he's saying to other characters that they, you know, meet along the way. And it's just very beautiful, very poetic novel, very simple and stark without being bleak or you know too understated just beautiful and exactly kind of what you need if you're looking for your first really really good read of the year I think it's really exciting and I think um we're going to see a lot of Jessie Ball after this and then finally also coming out in April I've got The Dictionary of Animal Languages by Heidi Sopinka I hope that's how you say that name. Uh, Heidi Sapinka has written, you know, travel literature, magazine literature, and this is her first novel, and it's seriously impressive. I absolutely loved it. It follows the life of a now elderly artist called Ivory Frame, and uh, she's now, you know, 90 years old, living a secluded life in a forest, you know, like making her last grand project, as she says. And one day out of the blue, she gets this letter that says she has a granddaughter even though she herself never actually had any children. And from there, we kind of brought back in time and we follow her through her time at boarding school, art college, in interwar Paris, World War II, all the way up to, you know, finally find out what happens. So it's kind of a mystery, but also just a really beautifully written, incredibly detailed and dense, but I mean that in a good way. Like I love a good dense sentence with lots of words and everything. Really, really just, 
fantastic, impressive writing. So I'm actually really interested to see if she's going to write another one. I know this one hasn't even come out yet, but I, I hope she writes another one. There was also a lot of like beautiful uh, links with animals because uh, the main character, Ivory, she now lives in the forest and she's always talking about the sounds of the animals and every chapter is named after a different animal and the story kind of links up with that animal and it's just, there's so much going on it's, it's really, really beautiful. I almost can't describe it well, so maybe just read it when it comes out in April, okay? <laughs> okay, guys, that's it from me for this month. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be chatting to you again soon with some more book reviews on the Waterstones vlog. Okay, bye!